Welcome to the studio. The topic today is the hip impingement. And we have a very special guest who's pregnant. So we have also an insight, you know, hip impingement in the context of pregnancy and delivery. Megan, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Yeah. Hip impingement is quite common, mostly in men, sometimes in women. And it's a mechanical conflict between the ball and the socket. There are different cases, you know, either the, the socket is too large or the ball has some deformation, which can be seen on the MRI, on the X-ray. This is, you know, the, like the morphological aspect of it. But today we want to check what we can do specifically to avoid the mechanical conflict and how to transfer this in pregnancy and delivery. So let's start at the beginning, Megan. Mm -hmm. Hip impingement, how, how, how does this feel? How did it come about? I had felt it for a long time. Which means? Which means maybe when I was around 19, 20 years old, I started to feel that uh, there would be places where my hip would feel stuck and a little bit um, painful. Yeah, and you are professional, you are a yoga teacher? Yes, and I was practicing a lot of yoga at the time and hiking, very active life. And um, I would find in particular certain yoga positions very uncomfortable and hiking downhill very uncomfortable. So th this is a very important insight. Mm -hmm. Because it's a mechanical conflict, you cannot heal it by uh, your certain postures. You can by avoiding certain postures, but you can also damage uh, your hip by going into certain postures. And what you said that you felt discomfort, sometimes a little pain, and you felt blocked in certain position, that's the key symptom to mm -hmm. realize, you know, there is a hip impingement. Mm -hmm. That's how it starts. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you, did you, what did you experience when you say, well, you know, I'm young, I'm yoga teacher, you know, and it doesn't work. How did you deal with that limitation? Well, I would try to go to doctors and yeah. see, but I did find out that if I could move my hip in a certain way, I could pop it. Yeah. I could click it and it would feel good. Yeah. And I would continue to ask doctors and not get clear answers. Mm -hmm. um, and because I could kind of maneuver and click things into place, Proper position, yeah. then I didn't stress too much about it. Um, and then one, one hike in particular, yes, about five years ago, I was walking downhill. We, it was already six hours into this particular hike. And, Ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I really felt something. Strong pain. Strong pain. It felt like my, the bone on my, in my hip turned into a knife. It was yeah. Yeah, very, it's excruciating very pain. painful. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And then. We do diagnostics, find out the hip impingement, which type, you know, in, in your case, it was a spe specific type, you know, not, not very common. Mm -hmm. But then it's about to learn how to deal with that in mm -hmm. everyday life. I mentioned to avoid the mechanical conflict. So how did you do that? How successful have you been? Now, since, um, yeah. uh, since I've become aware of it, I actually uh, became aware of, at the time, about five years ago, before I saw you, yeah. I finally got an MRI and was told what's happening. Yes. And there I was told what movements to avoid. And so I avoided the movements. It was okay. Mm -hmm. But I never felt right that I didn't know how to, what to do to make it better, even though I knew what to avoid to yeah. make it better. And um, so I was successful in avoiding activities and yes. avoiding things. But I want to go hiking and I want to <laughs> do these things. So, um, so I sought after finally other help and um, finally heard about Shviral Dynamic and Katie. So the thing, you know, to... to find the full and to live the full potential even if you have a hip and joint it works like this 
So the, 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 the socket is part of the pelvis and here is the, the ball. And when you walk, you know, you cannot change that part very much, but you can change the way how your pelvis moves on, on your leg. And if you learn how to walk properly, you know, then you can avoid the mechanical um, uh, conflict while at the same time, you know, living your full potential, you know, walking, climbing and everything. It's only a few things you have to avoid, not large movements. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and so it worked quite well for you, didn't it? Yes, I, um, we saw each other and the, um, you pointed out a way for me to step that was very different from the steps I was taking before. And mm -hmm. this instantly changed the sensation of my walk. Yeah. And um, I've been working with it and so far success. Yeah, sometimes if you do if you do the right thing, if it, it's it's like it's miraculous. Yes, yes. it's yes. this. Whoa. It's this instant, <laughs> and then you feel it. You know that's mm -hmm. much better, mm -hmm. right? Now, Megan, uh, congratulations! You're pregnant. You're Thank getting you. closer to to delivery, and uh, being pregnant is a challenge for the hip because it, naturally you, the pelvis tends to tilt forward. And uh, we have, and you learn to, to bring this pelvis in an upright position, which means to carry your baby under your heart you know, and not spilling it out forward. And we have a little video that shows that. Shall we have a look? Yes. So we see here, bringing your pelvis in an upright position and bring it back in the regular position. So this really helps, the upright position helps both the hip and the lumbar spine and the baby. So can you describe the difference where, if you go for a walk or in everyday life, whether you have your pelvis tilted forward or if bring it in an upright position? How, what's the difference in your experience? The difference for me is um, just a, really a matter of, of pain or no pain. Mm -hmm. I come home when I'm tired and let everything tilt forward and I have, I don't have a good feeling in my hips. I'm, I have to sit down, lie down. And when I'm, when I'm, in a proper upright position, mm -hmm. I can find a good position of my pelvis. I can walk for a very long time, even as big as I am now, um, without great. pain. Great, yeah. great, mm -hmm. wonderful, well done. Yeah. <laughs> One thing, bringing the pelvis in an upright position, is like it seems like everybody knows it, but the common mistake is in, to tuck it under. So then you bring it in upright position, but actually push it forward at the same time. That would be a mistake. So it's it's a specific movement to bring it in upright position and bring it backwards. Now we have a second discovery. You know, to in order to move, one step is to bring the pelvis in upright position. Second step is what does the pelvis do in while you moving in motion? So you have. The human being is a bipedal cross-walking pattern person, being. So you need to, to find the torsion, the spiral movement of your spine while having you know, the pelvis in the proper position. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's have a look. So we can see here, you know, one hand at the back, one at the, at, the, at the ribs in front, and now you open your left rib cage and you open your how do you call this part, your, your lumbar area and your pelvis? Mm -hmm, the yeah. waist, yeah. The waist, yeah. So this is really a di diagonal spiral movement, which helps, which makes movement economic and helps the pelvis naturally, you know, in, a, in an upright position. Mm -hmm. So how, that, it, if I remember right, this was really a, a discovery for you. This was probably the biggest, um, 
we, call, we say aha moment mm -hmm. for we me. Say, we say the same in oh, German. Oh, you do? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the aha moment. Yes. Yeah. It was, it felt so right. Yes. It felt very right to, to do this movement, but my body didn't know it. Yeah. Despite all the yoga and the training and the walking? All the yoga, the training and the walking and the studying and I, yeah. yeah. And it's the most, it's the basic locomotion of human being, cross yes. pattern locomotion. But the key, the key thing is when we see, um, you know, when, when we see locomotion cross pattern, we see legs moving and arms moving and we forget, you know, the, the rib cage and the spine, how this moves in the spiral movement specifically. Mm -hmm. And I have seen this, Megan, so many times when people doing sports or dance or yoga discover the three-dimensional flexibility of their spine mm -hmm. and the rib cage it changes their life. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy, you know, you have been discovering this. Yes, me too. Yeah. And then we had uh, one last um, meeting, mm -hmm. given the givens, you know, the the pregnancy and yeah. delivery coming up. So we're working uh, with pelvic floor with abdominal muscles and with diaphragm breathing you know and creating pressure uh, would you say pressure in your in, in abdominal yes. you know, strength you know power and your pelvic floor mm -hmm. so we have one last film where we can see this and we see you sitting here on on a chair you know and then you're you're bringing your pelvis in upright position and then you you create uh, how would you call that you create power in your powerhouse or Maybe you contract contract yeah. muscles mm -hmm. yeah, and contract abdominal muscles and waist muscles at the mm -hmm. same time yeah mm -hmm. and coordinate this with the pelvic floor either the pelvic floor contracts too like we see here now or the pelvic floor relaxes mm -hmm. yeah so this was another uh, discovery for you. So how did you experience it? How can you use this now for delivery? I am so happy to have learned this because um, when we were talking about mm. how how in birth women push yeah. we, w without the right correct instructions mm -hmm. we will contract our pelvic floor and hold the baby in which ha not happens because the pelvic floor usually does this when we are coughing and laughing. Exactly. You know, then we create pressure and the natural reaction of the pelvic floor is always contraction. And this is good so. Mm. But in giving birth, it's the opposite. Yeah. 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 So um, I feel much more confident that when I go into labor, that yeah. I will have the ability to feel if I'm holding in. Yeah. And if I and I guess to find this appropriate balance of contracting the upper um, uh, part abdominal. of the abdominal, yes, exactly, yes. Um, while relaxing the pelvic floor, yeah. which should be taught to every pregnant woman. Yeah, I think absolutely, and we're <laughs> practicing this a few times. You know, mm. the, so you contract the upper part of your abdomen and contract the pelvic and then do the opposite, contract the other upper part of your abdomen and relax your pelvis mm -hmm. and get into deep relaxation and help the relaxation with your breathing. And being who you are, being a yoga teacher, having lots of experience, you learned that very quickly. And it's just the fact that nobody told you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Megan, thank you very much for sharing your experience. And uh, I am right with you there. I, I think that everybody, you know, should every pregnant woman should have this experience before delivery. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So to sum it up, we started with hip impingement and having the right understanding, three-dimensional movement of the pelvis allows you know, to avoid the mechanical conflict without having to narrow or to limit the movement potential. And then second, we went to pregnancy, found out it's important to have the pelvis in an upright position. No tucking it under, but you know, extending the waist and the posterior part. And then last thing, 
which Megan and I wish for every pregnant woman, the coordination between diaphragm and abdominal muscles and pelvic floor. Unlike the usual coordination, which is the pelvic floor contracts, in this case, pelvic floor relaxes completely to give way you know, for a healthy baby. Thank you very much for your attention and all the best.